So I'm going to talk a little bit about treatment and treatment decisions. Um, the point about treatment, I think, is that um, there are some surprises coming up and um, that things are changing. And I just, without um, uh, sort of talking down to this audience, which uh, I think is quite a sophisticated audience, just to remind us all that we sort of talk about treatment as if it's, it's one kind of um, form of uh, administering therapy, but of course it's not. We use given treatments like ancyclovir or valgancyclovir in a range of different settings, either preventing, <coughs> reducing viral clearance without resolution of the infection, we, we do that sometimes, just reducing viral load, viral load as a surrogate <coughs> excuse me, of, um, of disease rather than as, any, uh, as, as being worthwhile to reduce of, its, of itself. Um, and of course our ultimate aim is to prevent the disease and transmission. In the case of CMV, we're really not too concerned about transmission because most of the target population is, uh, is infected. And really, I'm going to talk mainly about the antivirals, but it's important to remember that a number of areas of um, research are going on, particularly in the area of immunomodulation and treatment of CMV with immunomodulators. And the majority of anti-CMV agents are nucleic acid um, synthesis inhibitors, and they predominantly are nucleoside analogues, so they're gancyclovir or, or things like gancyclovir. And it's important to realise that the, the herpes virus's DNA polymerase is very different to things like the reverse transcriptase of HIV, or indeed the RNA polymerases of the other viruses, and um, that the majority of things we're looking at are directly inhibiting in some way the DNA polymerase of CMV. And just again to um, illustrate the point, um, there are, you can prevent attachment in the case of CMV by using things like um, intravenous immune globulin. Um, you directly, however, inhibit DNA and RNA synthesis mainly using things like valgancyclovir, rather, that is the nucleoside analogues as well as phosgarnet. Uh, which is a pyrophosphate analogue. Um, however, there are new drugs such as meribavir. There was a meeting in Toulouse a couple of, about uh, four weeks ago now, and the trials with meribavir are quite uh, interesting, and it's, uh, it's still somewhat toxic drug, but the interest is particularly that meribavir is acting in a very different area to the nucleoside analogues. It's acting in the area of protein synthesis and assembly, and so what's happening is we now have, as we do in HIV, drugs that are acting at two uh, sites. We also have drugs act, uh, or we have immunoglobulin which acts here and so there's the potential for multiple therapy for CMV. And um, <clears throat> just to remind you, the nucleoside analogues that we've relied on so much so far, like ancyclovir, acyclovir, valacyclovir, are really very similar in structure and action. And so when you're resistant to ganciclovir, you're resistant to the rest of them. And their action here um, is basically, this is the uh, DNA polymerase structure that um, uh, we published a couple of years ago and um, which uh, we're quite interested in the research level but one of the important things to say is that phosgarnet acts quite differently to gancyclovir as many of you are aware. It, as a pyrophosphate analogue it, it acts directly on the DNA polymerase and, and so what you see is, is uh, viruses, CMV viruses that are gancyclovir resistant are still sensitive to phosgarnet. The other point is that um, uh, the, the opportunity to use other drugs which um, have, an, uh, have inhibitory effects on CMV in combination with the known ones like gancyclovir is there. And so the opportunity for, for multiple therapy to reduce side effects and to increase efficacy is, is quite significantly there. Um, <clears throat> the other point is the orally bioavailable drugs such as val valacyclovir, which in vitro don't seem to inhibit CMV terribly well, do seem to work in a prophylactic sense and increasingly being used in this setting and do seem to be effective. <coughs> so very quickly about antiviral resistance. The resistance basically results from the changes either in this enzyme, the, the protein kinase, or in this enzyme, the DNA polymerase of CMV. And Changes even at a single nucleotide or a single amino acid in um, either of those can result in resistance to CMV. And what you see is a, is a virus that instead of with increasing concentrations of gancyclovir, the virus being inhibited, you see the virus keeps, uh, keeps growing. It's fairly straightforward. And the sort of um, patients that uh, get referred to us as a, a laboratory with interest in antiviral resistance and in reference testing for it, 
are those who are highly immunosuppressed. And in those highly immunosuppressed patients where CMV antiviral resistance is suspected, something like 50% of the isolates we receive are actually resistant to, CMV, to, um, to gancyclovir or to the other antivirals. So about one in two of those, the isolates from these highly immunosuppressed patients are in fact resistant. And this is just an example of a patient who um, develops with, with uh, gancyclovir therapy replaced by fosgarnet, continues to develop these um, resistant uh, isolates and in fact has a multiple um, circulating isolate, some of which are resistant, some of which are sensitive. The mutation detection, I won't go into the details because although it's of interest to me, I think that it's not of interest to some of the, the, the audience, but I'm happy to talk about it um, either afterwards or online. But basically, we look at the, um, the DNA polymerase, we look at a number of the sites that are functional in the DNA polymerase, we look at the U97 protein kinase, we look at those sites, and what we see are mutations in the DNA polymerase at all those sites. So it's not easy to detect, it's not a simple um, single test which just targets one site. It's slightly easier with the um, protein kinase in, in antiviral resistant CMV because there's only a couple of targets and they're much closer together. It's still not uh, straightforward and it's still not done um, in most, most uh, laboratories. And so just finally, just very quickly on vaccines, um, there's a number of being tried. There's been live attenuated CMV vaccines around for a long time. Those aren't terribly good. There are peptide subunit vaccines which are being tried, which should work better. They appear to need um, multiple epitopes to be present and not just one, one or two uh, glycoproteins. And um, these overlapping, overlapping peptide and these multiple target vaccines seem to be, to be working much better. The reality is that um, there are vaccine strategies which are going to need to be developed for every population. Uh, including uh, patients with HIV AIDS. All of these are preventive vaccines and they're currently being tried in the Europe and the US. Um, and the um, things like the, uh, the sort of national or international bodies that decide what we should be doing it make CMV prevention and uh, uh, particularly in <coughs> immunocompromised patients a major focus of what we should be doing and uh, pre prevention using vaccination. And so a quote from um, one of the people at the meeting um, uh, which I think just, just goes with CMV that um, basically even though we know a lot about it, even though we know a lot about the molecular events of resistance, even though we have antivirals, it still remains a significant problem um, despite uh, uh, all those things. Thanks very much.